so we found out mutual inductance for for a particular case when there were two solenoids coaxially uh, coaxial and and the length being the same and they being uh, the the smaller one being totally inside the bigger one right now what happens so what happens is is that the mutual inductance that we calculated the mutual inductance obviously depends on the proximity and orientation orientation and number of turns it obviously depends on permeability of the medium permeability of the medium now if we we saw it was in vacuum this was happening right mu not n1 n2 pi r1 square l correct that is in vacuum it would become mu not mu r n1 n2 pi r1 square l in a medium of permeability in a medium of permeability mu r we understand <clears throat> let us go back by one chapter we have heard we had seen there were diamagnetic there were diamagnetic there were diamagnetic paramagnetic and ferromagnetic material and what happened if i inserted that material inside my inside my solenoid the field change was something else correct the field was multiplied by mu r so so if you have those coils which are filled with material of permeability mu r then this mutual inductance gets multiplied by mu r mu r mu not is there when there is a vacuum okay and why does that happen for the simple reason that the b that we were calculating till now as mu not n i inside the solenoid that would become that was for vacuum as <coughs> this this becomes mu not mu r n i for material with permeability mu r right so try to understand the origin of it why will that be so why will there be a mu r here because of a mu r that will get inserted here why will that get inserted there because of whatever we have studied in chapter number 5 so they are linked you know they are linked we understand do we understand that and it's pretty simple so so permeability becomes an an essential factor and you very well understand if we have put a ferromagnetic material the permeability jumps by 3000 times right so the whole thing what you are expecting will be 3000 times more severe this is without a core you not n1 n2 yeah yeah in vacuum this is without a core now 
now we are in the position to why had we started all this all this concept of inductance to calculate the the induced emf fine so now i know that n151 is equal to m12 into i2 right flux in circuit 1 due to current in 2 current is in 2 the the linkage is by circuit 1 now by faraday's law of electromagnetic induction what happens minus ddt of n151 is equal to minus ddt of m12 i2 why did i do that because it is this which is is this which is e1 right so this is e1 and that becomes if this is a constant if this is a constant it comes out so it is minus m12 di1 di2 upon dt we get the point di2 di2 upon dt so this is the voltage that gets induced this is the voltage that gets induced fine how about how about the circuit 2 due to 1 so n2 phi 2 is equal to m1 m m21 i1 is it not and minus ddt of n2 phi 2 is equal to minus ddt of m21 i1 and this gives me and this gives me what this gives me e2 is equal to minus m21 di1 upon dt is it not understand Do we get that? Now it is not essential that there will be only two circuits. There, there could be three circuits. Okay, so in case of three circuits, in case of three circuits, what will happen? What will happen? The flux linked by the first one is equal to M11I1. What is M11 due to itself? Flux in 1 due to current in 1 plus flux in 1 due to current in 2 plus flux in 1 due to current in 3. Is it not? This is the total flux linked? That means this is N151. And if you find out the the minus ddt of n151 you'll get minus m11 di1 by dt minus m12 di2 by dt minus m13 di3 by dt more about it after we we uh, we have found out what m11 is and we have calculated it